Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff, and with Fluent American, you are here again on a Saturday edition of the Schwamil. If you're joining us for the first time in our live streams, what we are about to do is listen to your American English pronunciation. You're going to see at the top of the chat box, I have put a link where you can send in your own pronunciation files. If you're having trouble accessing that, you can take a look also at the video description. And by the way, we use this same link every single Schwabmill episode. So save the link in case you're watching this in the replay. It's great to see you in the future. But you can go to this link and include your audio file for our next edition. We typically update it on Thursdays or Fridays. Now, we did miss last week, and I apologize. But it's great to see everyone again. I see Emmanuel is in the house. Hello, hello. And Zubeda's checking in. Great, great, great. And Shok's checking in. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and once more, we're going to be taking a look in terms of the pronunciation files that you're sending me. You have a couple options. You can use a phrase that you use kind of in your normal daily life, and we could take a look at that. Or I've also included a link, which you'll see again by clicking the document. You'll see at the top there is a link to some common English idioms and expressions that you can take a look at. Pick one that you enjoy or that you like or that you're trying to learn. Then you can include your own pronunciation file in terms of how to say that. Now, you may be wondering, like, Jeff, how do I send you my pronunciation? I know you've included this document, but I don't get how that works. Well, let me show you. I'm going to share my screen and also my audio. I've definitely been in the sun. <laughs> Talking to Emmanuel Sam. A little bit tan. Um, it's hot. It's hot, and the weather has been relatively nice, though. Um yeah, anyways, so you can see, you want to see that, you want to see this. Okay, so in this document, you can see here, these are all the different things where all the files that people have already sent me. And you're going to see up top, there's this option that says, you pick some idioms, go to that link there. And then you'll also see that you can go to vocaroo.com. And vocaroo.com will look like this. Basically, it'll give you an option to record yourself. You record yourself. It gives you a link. You can then put that link down here. Tell me your name. Tell me about some of your English goals, and we can take a listen. Okay. So I think that runs down everything. If anyone has any questions, be sure to put them in the chat box. And if this is your first time being with us, let me know. And if this is your hundredth time being with us, you can also let me know, too. All right. Let me go get my headphones, though. I have to find them. In the meantime, just again, a quick overview about what we're about to do. Oh, let, me, oh, let, me, let me add myself. Let me add there, myself right? there, right? Again, it's not. Again, it's not. It's more. It's more. Let all. Let all. Uh, the G-ho the G-ho was. was clack, are you feeling that? Here, here, here. here, here. <laughs> all right, I have found them. So let's now take a look. Um, I have everyone loaded. I think. I don't think there's any new ones. We'll kind of just go at random. I think we have enough time to get through everybody today, which is great. How about this first one here? Stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. Okay, and I believe this is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, you made a note for me too. The uh, bush. Great. Oh, no, I have to find it again. Is it this one? Like riding a bush. No, not that one. I'm so sorry. Alexa. Dang it. I know it's right here somewhere. Stop beating around. There it is. Okay. I always forget I need to save those when I do that. Uh, okay. So. You, you mentioned that that uh sound in bush could be a little bit tricky. And I, I the issue could be the vowel sound because it is a vowel that is a little bit particular. Not every language has this uh sound that you can see in bush. Um, so just some quick notes about the uh. The back of your tongue is high. The front of your tongue is down. Also, watch my lips. Uh, uh. Notice how straight they are, right? Uh, uh, buh. Bush. Okay, so you want straight lips. You don't want them to be too round. It's just a note about that. Okay, um, back of your tongue high, front of your tongue down. The big thing, of course, is also going to be placement. If you're not sure what placement is, it's all about where you're projecting the sound from. In American English, you want your placement to be low in the throat and very relaxed and open. We want lots and lots and lots of air to come through your throat. 
Okay. So again, you don't want to sound like boo, ooh, because that sounds you're a little bit too close. Not enough air is making it through your throat. You want more of a uh, uh, buh. All of this to say, placement is going to be important for vowel sounds, but it's also going to be very important for consonant sounds as well. And something that we see very often is that consonants impact our vowel sounds if we're not careful. We don't want that to happen. Placement is for vowel sounds, but it's the same thing for consonant sounds as well. We want to be low and open for everything. So when you're saying, uh, maybe you're pronouncing that okay, but when you're adding that B sound, are you still keeping things open? A lot of students, what they're doing is they're saying like, uh, like in book, that uh sounded good. But then when they add that B sound, they close things off. So you, it's like going from uh, buh, uh. But some people are doing that. You want to make sure that that B is not impacting your vowel, that it stays uh, buh, uh, buh. One exercise I do a lot with students to try to strengthen the vowel sounds and to weaken the consonant sounds is to try repeating that pair like three times or four times as fast as you can. So doing something like this, uh, buh, uh, buh, uh, buh. do that with me again. Uh, buh, uh, buh, uh, buh. By repeating that, you're trying to weaken that B sound. If you find that you say, uh, buh, uh, buh, uh, buh, like you're doing it slower and that B sound is just a lot stronger and punchier, that's a sign that your B is probably doing too much work. Focus more on the vowel sound. It's not uh, buh, it's uh, buh, uh, buh, uh, buh, bush, uh, buh, bush. So with bush, you can add that to your progression. Uh, buh, bush, uh, buh, bush. Okay. Just note on that, watching out for that that B. But we'll listen to that again and see what's going on. Um, just some quick questions. Nameless and faceless is here. Oh, I miss Dustin. Dustin here. Great to see you in the stream, Dustin. Hope to see you in more future streams as well. I saw you send us an audio file. I'm excited to hear it. Who else we got? Mr. Go Big Girl Home is back. I did not stream. I was away. I was doing a poetry retreat. I don't know if anyone... Do you guys like poetry? Let me know if you like poetry in the, in the comments or in the chat. Um, yeah, I was at a poetry retreat. It was an intense, like, seven-day thing, so I did not have time. Okay. Uh, other things. Lip were straight, but it made an ooh sound. My guess is probably placement related. Um, could also be like, uh, ooh. Notice that when I'm doing ooh, uh, ooh. I don't know if you can see it, but my lips, when they're doing, let me... Make myself a little bigger. Okay, it's so like, uh, ooh, uh, ooh. Do you see a difference there? Um, so for the uh sound, uh, notice that my lips are a little bit wider. Uh, uh. Whereas for the ooh sound, notice that my lips are more closed. Ooh, uh, ooh. Okay, so let's watch out for that. Going back, make myself a little smaller. Another comment here from Dustin. Dustin says, it sounds like a schwa to me. Okay, so if that sounds like a schwa, compare. Let's compare. So Bush, what's a similar word that we could use? Let's compare similar sounds. I'll put these in the chat. Dustin, this is for you and me, man. Imagine everyone else is gone. It's just you and me in the room right now. Okay, so let's compare these words. Buck, buck. B, 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 B. Can you hear a difference between those? Okay. So, book, the back of my tongue is high and my front of my tongue is down. Versus buck, uh, my face is in a more neutral position. My teeth are not touching. The middle of my tongue is a little bit high. The very back of my tongue is down. It's more uh, uh. So, it's not uh, uh. Where my lips are a little bit more closed, um, jaw is slightly higher versus uh, uh, where my jaw just kind of hangs there, not doing a whole lot with it. Uh, it's like uh, uh, buck, 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 buck. We have a video that talks more about the difference between an uh sound and an uh sound. Um, I'll try to post that in the comments afterwards, but you can also just type in um, the, the schwa sound. And then the uh sound um, in the channel and the search. You can find our video. It takes a look at that. Um, but same thing with like bush. 
So for instance, book, bush. Do you hear that? Same sound. Book, bush versus buck, bus, buck, bush, bus. Excuse me. It's like, let's, I'll type these so you guys can see them. Um, buck, bus. So again, I've paired these with similar vowel sounds. Okay, so book, bush, same sound, same vowel, versus buck, bus, same sound, schwa sound. Book, bush, buck, bus. See so if you can hear the difference. This is, it can be a relatively slight difference, so it may take some time to train it. Okay, I'm just a note. That's uh, Immigrant Mimo. Great. It's nice listening to you. Great to see you here. Great to read you. <laughs> Good vibes, and you got this. Thank you, man. Likewise, likewise, likewise. Um, okay, let's get back to Emmanuel, though. I know he's like, great, Jeff, but I want to hear the other stuff about the sentence. Let's, let's see it again. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. Yeah, I definitely like hearing boo, boo versus buh, bush. So... I would say try weakening your B. That's the first thing I would say. And then the second thing I would say is um, try opening your mouth a little wider because it might be a little bit too closed. Okay. Stop beating around the bush. And Besides that, um, I like a lot of what you're doing here. It's like stop being around the stop being around the, the bush. Stop being around the bush. Stop being around the bush. So you're stressing bush. Nothing else is really stressed. Um, I like your progression with the pitches and your linking. Stop beating around the bush. Like your fast descent on beating. That can be a tricky... Um, that could be a tricky sequence. That could be a tricky group of words, letters to say, a tricky group of sounds. And I like what you do there. Beating, beating, so that fast sound not super strong. I like what you're doing. Stop beating around the bush and tell. Yeah, stop beating around the. I like your your pitches. Stop beating around the beating around the around the. It's like those that low those lower pitches. I know you're always working on those. I'm liking it. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. The bush and tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. Um, one option that you could do here, it, your tell me, tell is kind of heavy stress there. On the bush and tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. You hear that? Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. That's fine. You could stress tell me. Tell. Personally, if I were saying it, I may not stress tell though. Stop being around the bush and tell me what you want. Stop being around the bush and tell me what you want. You know, maybe very slight stress, but it's not necessary to stress tall. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. Around the bush. And... Another option that you could do too, if you're just kind of looking for experimentation, is you could move your thought group. So right now you have two very clear thought groups. Um, stop being around the bush, thought group, and tell me what you want, thought group. Fine, nothing inherently wrong with that. I, what I see with students a lot is... Uh, the thought groups that they're using in sentences tend to be very neat. You know, like if it's a period, the thought group ends. It's a, if it's a comma, the thought group ends. If it's an and, the thought group ends right before and. You know, so it's like these very grammatically um, fitting thought groups. But the reality is once you start listening to native speakers more, you start noticing that thought groups are not ending always where you expect them to. It's not so neat. Just because it's a period doesn't mean your thought group ends. Just because it's a comma doesn't mean your thought group ends. So one place where you could experiment with having your thought group end. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. You could have had, you could have put the thought group after tell me. Stop being around the bush and tell me. Stop being around the bush and tell me what you want. Stop being around the bush and tell me what you want. You know, so like something like that. You could have a longer first thought group. And then a shorter second thought group. It doesn't have to be so balanced and so neat. Okay, but just something to experiment with. Um, overall, I like this audio. I think it sounds pretty good. If you have any questions about that, be sure to let me know. But thank you for sending it to me. I do appreciate it. Let's see another question I want to take a quick look at. It's a big what, one. Question, question. Where have you been? Again, I was at a writing retreat. So I was away for a week. I missed you guys. I thought about you, but I just did not have time uh, to, to do our stream or at least to do justice to what I would like to do during our streams. So I wasn't able to be there last week, but it's great to be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's take a listen to our next one. 
It's all the way over here. Time flies when you're having fun. Okay. Marcos? Time flies when you're having fun. Okay, so you're stressing time. Time flies in fun when you're having fun. Time flies when you're having fun. When you're having fun. Um, okay. So first thing on stress. For that first thought group, I would change your stress. It's like time flies. You put a lot of stress on time. I would recommend instead putting a stress on flies. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies versus time flies. Okay. Something else that may help with that is because right now your pitches are almost equal. So you get kind of this very flat sound. See if you can hear that. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. I guess it's like flat, 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 flat. No change. No change. This, 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 this. Let's let's make this a little bit more dynamic for your stress sound. Again, I would stress flies. I would raise the pitch on flies. I would also maybe consider doing like a falling lower the pitch as you're saying time. Time flies. Time flies. Something like that. Just to make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more engaging. So that's just saying really flat. Um, time flies when you're having fun. When you're having when you're having fun. When you're again a little flat on that second half as well when you're having fun when you're having fun again i think that individual sounds are okay um it's when you're having fun uh watch out for that schwa sound on fun okay um so it's not fa fa it's more f f fun fun uh definitely check out our videos talking about the schwa sound in more detail i have the seven day schwa if you go to my channel page look at the playlists on the channel page and there's one just dedicated to the schwa like it's a seven day schwa challenge uh, I, I would definitely recommend that. You're having fun. Because I'm hearing fa, fa versus fa, fa, fun. Okay, so just, just a note about that. Um, but again, going back to pitches, I think the biggest thing right now is just increasing your range of pitches. You want to raise that pitch on fun. When you're having fun. When you're having time flies. When you're having, so going low. When you're having, when you're having. So it's like down, 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 up down 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 up when you're having and then highest pitch on fun fun when you're having fun time flies when you're having fun time flies when you're having fun and i think if you like go to the website like youglish um and just type in this is a common expression so i imagine you'll get tons and tons of hits for this um listen to how they're saying it and i think you're going to notice a lot of native speakers are just way more dynamic in their pitches because right now we're just a little bit too flat okay uh, those would be my big recommendations for you there. Um, I hope that makes sense. If anything's not clear, leave me a message. But thank you. I cannot do this without you. Okay. I'll stop by the chat really quick because I know some things came in. Uh, really quick, I'll get some water, though. Like what you're hearing. Let us know by liking and subscribing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. I mean, I do what I can. I've had some things published here and there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Vladimir has returned. Um, sorry about Nightbot. He gets a little particular. There's a go big, go home. Yeah, I'm testing things out. So I'm using a different, I'm using my main camera as my webcam now. So I'm kind of experimenting with it. It seems like there's like a very, very, very slight delay. Let me know in the chat box if it's a little bit of a delay for you guys too. It might just be on my end, but um, I don't think it's enough to be horrible, but something that's a little bit noticeable. And another question too, big question. 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 Um, <laughs> so it all depends. I've been to a couple. The way this one works is, so basically for seven days, we had to have a new poem ready each day, which for me is a lot. Usually it takes me probably like two or three weeks to get a first draft. But for this, it was like seven days. We had to write a new poem every day. Um, and then typically in the afternoon, there's like a work, it's called a workshop. So basically you you sit around, everyone reads every, each other's poems and then just kind of give suggestions, um, things that they notice, suggestions for improvements, things that they like, things like that. So a lot of just giving feedback. Um, and then typically in the evenings, there are different readings so people can share their work. There's a lot of like visiting poets, like for instance, this, um, the one I went to, there was a poet named Tayyamba Jess. He won the 
Pulitzer Prize for poetry, which is a, in poetry was a big deal um, a couple years ago. Um, so that's great. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what it involves. It's a lot of like connecting, meeting people. You know, people have books coming out, so like learning about their books and their projects and things. Um, uh, Mr. Go Big or Go Home. Oh, also like the new background. Yeah, so again, it's the same background, just uh, with a different camera, which kind of gives it a different look. Um, I know you sent a question earlier, too. What's the difference between torn and conflicted? I mean, depending on the situation, they can be synonyms. I think if you're asking this for situations, like if you're undecided about something, or like you want one thing, but you also want another thing, but maybe you can't do both. You know, you could say you're torn or conflicted. So I think in that situation, you, you can really use them as synonyms in all honesty. Um, but again, I would recommend, hey, find like five or 10 example sentences with torn. Like I'm torn. I would type in that phrase. I'm torn on Google, see what hits you get. And then conflicted, like I'm conflicted. And just find like 10 more examples of that. Okay. We have a question here. What a question this is. Question. Question. Is it possible to ask questions here? Yeah. I love questions asking questions. Please ask questions. We'll get back to some audio in a moment. And another one. What's the difference between envision and imagine? They, the, again, synonyms. I think envision is kind of more like, um, kind of like, uh, like what you see happening for the future. Like, for instance, if someone asks you, like, hey, like, what do you envision for this project? You could be like, oh, well, I want this to happen. I think this will happen. I think this will happen. This is, these are all the things that I'm expecting. Whereas imagine, I think, has a little bit more sense of fantasy. Just because you imagine something, it may not actually happen. Envision has a better sense of actually coming true in the future, I would say. Um, hopefully that makes sense. What's a Nightbot? Nightbot is a guy who kind of hangs out in my chat box. And if anything gets kind of crazy, he intervenes and sends you messages kind of like this. Yes. Keep it clean. Keep it friendly. It doesn't like caps. It doesn't like cussing and things like that. Um, but of course, if you have some more questions, be sure to put them in the chat box. Okay. What about your text? Someone and they're like, I visual. you. I can envision you. Question about love. I see. We'll get to that question in a moment. What about you text someone and they're like, I can envision you laying down it. Hmm. I personally, in that situation, I actually probably would have used in imagine. Okay. Like, oh, I can imagine you doing that or I can imagine you did that and things like that. A lot of times with like a pronoun like you or him or her, a lot of times it, Probably imagine it's probably going to be the more common verb to use, but envision not possible. Um, I mean, envision is possible. Yeah, so it was just in that sense, what they're saying there, yeah, yeah, I think envision or imagine could be used as synonyms. Quest, question, question. Another one here. Linking of V and W. Love with, love with, love with. Yeah, yeah, super weak. One thing this is going to be key for all. You know, pronunciation tactics in American English. Remember, American English is focused on vowel sounds. American English is also focused on breath. What this means is that your consonant sounds are very, very often going to become reduced and very weakened. In fact, I have a don't know. I have a video that I think would be really helpful for questions like this. But uh, for instance, like love with, love with. Like if you say like, oh, I'm in love with her. Like, I'm in love with my wife. I'm in love with my wife. I'm not, you notice, know, I'm not really making heavy contact with my lower lip. I'm not saying love with. I could. There's nothing wrong with that. But in rapid speech, you may not have time to. Because also, you know, if as long as your vowel sounds are correct and the general consonant sounds are correct, people are going to understand you. They're not listening for every sound to be perfect. Okay. Um, some videos I have for that that I think would be really helpful. Um, I just want to highlight them so you guys can. Check them out because I think they'll be useful resources. Give me a moment to get back. Okay, just take a moment to load up my channel. So everything wants to be super slow right now. Okay, but basically, um, sounds like an old. <laughs> I never. Um, 
I'll be honest, I never used Yahoo Messenger. Did anyone here use like AOL, AOL Instant Messenger, AIM? Any AIM folks? I know some of you guys are a little young. Not that like I'm super old, but. Uh, but in case like you, you want somewhere to practice with that thing I just mentioned about like love with and things like that. By the way, in case you're not checking out our live stream, check out my live stream here. You can you can check out my live stream on my live stream. Isn't that cool? Uh, Akesh, I hope I'm pronouncing that okay-ish. Uh, great to see you. I'm glad you two recommended it. If you have specific questions about pronunciation, be sure to post it. You can also put, in case you're just joining us as well, welcome. Um, you can go to this link in the lesson description or at the top of the chat box and include your own audio files. Oh, Rakesh, you actually did. Hey, new sub, please listen. Okay, we'll, we'll check that out in a moment. Um, but really quick, there were some videos I wanted to highlight. First video is here. Okay, so if you just go to the channel page and if you go down how to speak English faster and fluently, there's this video that says key English pronunciation tricks. This is the first one. So again, like love with. I would definitely take a look at this video. It's going to go over some techniques. Okay. The other video that's going to be helpful as well is going to be this one here for adding more breath to help link from vowel sounds to vowel sounds more cleanly as opposed to vowel sounds letting the consonants take over. Okay. The other video that I just want to mention really quick, if I can find it, maybe I'll mention it who Messenger. Um, 20 years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago, right? I never, again, and not one I actually used a whole lot, honestly. Uh, what I see? Where is the one that I wanted? This one's talking about pitches, which is helpful. It's one of those videos that if I, once I see it, I'll know it. Mm, I might need to search for this later because I honestly don't remember. Yeah, there's a lot of videos, right? Oh, it's clear. That's one of those we can find here. Promise this will be a second. I never again, I never used Yahoo Messenger. This video, clear English. Clear English hurts your pronunciation, and it's true. And I'll tell you all about why in this video. But my guess is if you're watching these videos, you probably already speak a very clear, articulate English. But in a lot of ways, if your goal is to sound natural, that's actually hurting you. Um, so that's kind of what this video is talking about. So if you go to the channel, type in clear English, you'll be able to get that. I'm going to give you guys, I want to check out Rakesh's files since they're new. Okay. Just want to scout this file, make sure it's appropriate for everybody. I want to send anything appropriate. Well, that's why I won't do that. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Rakesh, but I can't actually listen to that file <laughs> online. My apologies. But thanks for sending it. I appreciate that. Um. In terms of actual sounds, the sounds actually were pretty good. Um, let's go back to sharing. That's why we always check files. Uh, okay. When you give me a good job or very good feedback, you may have pronounced like a native. Ah, good question. <laughs> is this specifically about me in particular or is it about like teachers in general? Um, I think it kind of depends. You know, if I say very... If I think something usually sounds like super, super natural, I try to be clear that like, hey, I think that is a very natural way of saying it. Or I thought that sounded super, super natural. When I say good job or very good, that can mean that it sounds natural, but it can also mean that, hey, I think that, you know, we might need to add a little bit more breath or something like that. But especially compared to how you pronounced it in the past. I heard a huge difference and I thought it sounded really good. And I want you to continue practicing that sound. Okay, I do. That, that's a great question. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question, but that's probably my, be my best honest answer to that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, just me. Okay, let's see. Uh, what are you saying? You can check the audio files. <laughs> I can access this document. So can you guys, if you're curious to hear other people. I cannot, I did not send these audio files, so I cannot speak to them. Um, but in, if you're super, super curious about hearing what other people have done, um, including if it includes vulgar language and things, you guys are welcome to check out. Anyways, uh, that was quite a long sequence. Let's take a listen to more pronunciation files, shall we? 
Marshmallow, I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Okay, a lot happening here. Marshmallow, I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Okay, so the sentence is, hello, Marshmallow, I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Very violent show. Super violent. Oh, my God. So this is the sentence that we'll be taking a look at. Hello, Marshmallow, can you, you eat those cheeks? Okay. A very <laughs> unexpected sentence from Shook, but okay. Um, before we get to the feedback, just some quick things in the comments. So let's show you and you being GJ. <laughs> no one failed. I mean, again, most people who are watching these streams are already speaking English at a very high level. So I don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone here would be failing. Um, the goal is just, hey, how do we achieve an even more natural sound? Because a lot of people here are perfectionists, which I like because that's how I am too. Um, no one fails here, though. Um, like, why? We don't understand me and correct it. Um, yes, this is a super unique sentence. Yes, I definitely agree with that. That it, Zubeda, I'll be honest, I don't have a great answer to this question right now. My, my suggestion would be to... Um, I would go to Google, type in some things. Um, it would also be helpful to have more context in terms of actual sentence. Wise can be used in situations like that. Um, but the situations where it's appearing like that aren't like super common. So it's possible, but not as common. Um, a lot of times instead of wise, you may see like, um, you may see like a phrase like, like in terms of, um, or like regarding. Those may be things that you see in place of wise in terms of the, the meaning that you're going for. Okay, but I think there are ways you can make it work, but I would need more context for that. I'm sorry. All right, let's go back to... Oh, no, I think it was our first one, right? Marshmallow, I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Marshmallow. <laughs> um, I think it got a little bit cut off. Again, this is our sentence. I think it did get a little bit cut off. Marshmallow. I'm not hearing the hello. I'm just hearing marshmallow. 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 Hello, marshmallow. To me, something about the pitch sounds a little bit interesting. Marshmallow. I would expect a more oh, oh, kind of like a fall rise. Oh, hello, marshmallow. Hello, marshmallow. Okay. Um. Honestly, that's the uh, that's the pattern that I think that uh, I'm expecting more, and this one's kind of falling up. Marshmallow, marshmallow, or maybe even rising higher. That's another option that you could have. But the current way of doing it, I think, is just sounded a little bit interesting and slightly unexpected. Marshmallow, like marshmallow. I want to kill you to eat. I want to kill you. I want to kill you to eat Hello. those. I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Okay, so the cheeks is obviously the word that's standing out super strongly here. Eat those cheeks. Eat those cheeks. Eat those cheeks. I can't even, my mouth's not even, my throat's not letting me reach those pitches. Um, eat those cheeks. But I think, you know, I appreciate the range. It's great to hear the range. I like making it dynamic. Okay. I do think that it may go, it's like going from those to cheeks, the jump is just so high that I think it's taking you away from that natural sounding rhythm. Okay. So one thing you could do is you could start to climb on those a little bit. Those cheeks, those cheeks, there's like something like that. Um, and so like those cheeks, like, you, you know, start to climb up even at, towards the end of those can just help make that transition a little smoother. You to eat those cheeks. I also think your consonant sounds in this middle sequence are kind of taken over. I want to kill you to eat those. I want to kill you to eat those. I want to kill you to eat those. It's like your T's and TH sounds, you know, those are kind of taken over. Your consonant sounds are strong. Um, and like I said earlier, English is really all about the vowel sounds. So we don't want those consonants to stand out. We want the vowels to stand out. Kill you to eat those. To eat those. To eat those. Kill you to eat those. Kill you to eat those. You know, part of the reason why American English is known for using like fast D flap T sounds is because it allows you to weaken the consonant and it allows you to strengthen the vowel. So instead of kill you to eat those versus kill you to eat those, kill you to eat those, you hear that kill you to, kill you to, instead of kill you to, kill you to, kill you to, kill you to, do you hear the difference? Um, the kill you to, is, it just allows you to flow a lot more. Whereas if you say kill you to, it stops you, it blocks air momentarily and things like that. So 
using more of a fast D sound for the kill you to kill you to eat those chi. To eat those. Also think that um you could reduce to kill you to eat those. Did it to kill you to kill you to versus kill you to kill you to. A lot of times two is not pronounced as two. It's pronounced as the the use a schwa sound instead of ooh you more uh kill you to kill you to. I want to kill you to eat those cheek. Eat those versus eat those, eat those. You can also link again those th that t to the th. And I, I, this is again another video. If you look at um tricks for your tongue, that video I have. Just go to my channel, type in tricks like tongue tricks, and you'll find it. I think I mentioned it earlier. Um, kill you to eat those, eat those, eat those. Can you say eat those with the tongue down against the bottom of your mouth? This is for everyone here. This is not just for show. Um, eat those. You're right, but not none, none of those words is stress. We're stressing cheeks. Kill you to eat those. Kill you to eat those cheeks. Kill you to eat those cheeks. Kill you to eat those cheeks. You know, is kill and cheeks. Those are your stresses. So everything else you can make a lot weaker. And just a note. Oh, I want to kill you to eat those cheeks. Okay, so those are going to be my big comments there. I'm just trying to get this to flow a little bit more and sound a little bit more natural. I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions about that, be sure to let me know. But thank you for sending that file. Ooh, I need a quick... Oh, I need to find my mouse firstly. That's why it's helpful. I need to take a quick water break. But if you guys have any questions, now is a great time. Like what you're hearing. Let us know by liking and subscribing. Okay, and maybe you're just joining us for the first time. So again, my name is Jeff. Welcome to the Schwa Mill. This is our Saturday show where basically we listen to your pronunciation files and we give some suggestions in terms of American English pronunciation and how to get this to sound more natural. Okay. Yes. Trying to stay hydrated. I encourage you to do that as well. Let me know if you're drinking some. What are you drinking? We're drinking some tea. Maybe a nice glass of wine. Maybe it's the evening where you guys are. Let me know what you guys are doing. Okay. Um, Mike, thing with two seconds. Yes. Yeah, I figured it was. I don't think it, I, I imagine what she was saying is she did say the full thing. But yeah, you're you're definitely right. It does chop off if you're not careful. Oh man, nameless and faceless keeps wanting to challenge me. Were she the one that was giving me those tongue twisters last time? But uh, let's let's see. Sometimes the ten ten stop saints ten fall tens. Uh, I have not seen this one before. This is probably going to be horrible, but I'll try to do as fast as I can. Sentos to 10, 10, stout saints, 10 tall tents. How's that? <laughs> you guys do it too. Let me know what part messes you up or if you're able to do it. I'll do it one more time. Sentos to 10, 10, stout saints, 10 tall tents. Okay. This is kind of doing the opposite. It's really causing you to focus so much on those T sounds, which um, kind of... It becomes really choppy, right? Send send toast to ten ten stout saints. You know, so it's, there's less stops there, a lot of blocking of the air. We're normally in, again in English, you want those vowels. It says like send toast to ten. You'd really want this sound. Send toast to ten. Send toast to ten. It's like trying to reduce, for instance, to. That's a question here. Why is it called the schwa mill? Um, it's a play on the word a, a sawmill, where basically they cut like trees and things like that so i was like schwa and saw the kind of similar sounds there so it's just kind of a play on that that's why it's also the logo is that schwa on top of a saw schwa being used as the handle that's why i was thinking anyways you guys can be like hey jeff that was a horrible idea or be like hey jeff that was a great idea you know let, let me know what you guys think of the name of the show um okay moving back to and also, of course, as Mayor likes to point out, we are cutting schwa sounds. That is not wrong. Who we got here? You can say that again. Marcos, let me come back. I want to make sure we get everyone first before we do second rounds. Get something out of it this time. Get something out of it this time. I think the audio might be. Let me know on the audio, guys, if you can hear that audio okay. For me, it's a little bit low. Get something out of it this time. Okay. So I'm going to kind of do this a little fast. Uh, the big thing I think is going to be stressed. You're stressing out. Get something out of your system. Get something out of it this time. Get something out of your system. You're, that's how you say system. 
Get something out of your system. Get something out of your system. Get something out of your system. Get something out of your system. You probably don't want to stress out. And that's kind of what you're doing right now. Get something out of your system. Get something out of you. You hear that jump? Get something out. You hear that jump? Something out. Something out. And that jump is causing the out to sound stress. Most likely your stresses, if you wanted multiple stresses, you could stress get. It's like get something. Get something. I said get something or get something. Out of your system. Out of your system. Stress system. Get something out of your system. I have to get it out of my system. I have to get it out of my system. So again, I would stress get and system, two stresses. Get something out of your system. Yeah, so most likely out would not be your stress. That's going to be the, the big thing here because that's going to completely change your rhythm. Okay. Emmanuel asks, why not stress system? You can't stress system. There's nothing wrong with stressing system. That's okay. Get something out of your system. Uh, let me um, also type this in case you're... Having trouble understanding this? Get something out of your system. This is the phrase you're taking a look at. Get something out of your system. Get something out of your system. Get something out of. Okay, I like the in terms. Of, I'm just looking at like vowels, consonant sounds. I think those are okay. Get something out of your system. Get something out of your system. Out of ah. Ow, ow. I do think for out, your placement sounds a little bit high. I'm hearing like, ow, ow, versus ow, ow. So I would like a little bit more air to come through your throat there. Okay, for that ow sound. If you're looking for some more ow words, you could try like ow, um, brown, cow, found, pound. Um, just some more practice words there. Sound. Also, watch out for system because you're saying system. System, system, system. So you're kind of putting the stress on that second syllable, but you want the stress to be on the first syllable. It's system, system. It's not system, it's system. So weaken that second syllable more. You can almost whisper it, system. Get something out of your system. Okay, so those would be my big uh, suggestions there. Uh, thanks for sending that file. Um, in the future, I would say, hey, if you get a little closer to your mic um, or turn the volume just a little bit, it'll be super, super helpful for us. But I think we got some um, good points to consider. Who's here? Sorry about the background noise. Okay. <laughs> Is this like a meta thing? Like, it, <laughs> there's no background noise in this, what she's saying. Sorry about the background noise. Sorry about the background noise. Okay. Um, Oh, let's talk really quick about our sentence. What does it mean, by the way? What does it get something out of your system? Um, good question. Like to get something out of your system, like um, means that like you you feel like this impulse or urge to do something, and so you're trying to like not have that anymore. Like um, for instance, I don't know, like um, like like kids. You know, sometimes kids have tons and tons of energy, so. You know, I might say to my son, okay, go go run outside for a couple minutes just to get it out of your system. Because it's like, my God, you have like all this energy. This is too much. Like, go go do something to get rid of that. Um, like, to get rid of that that urge or whatever. Okay. Um, this is just a note about that. Okay. And, yeah, there's no background noise. Yes, it's just, just a sentence that we say every day. Okay. Um, Sorry about the background noise. Sorry about the background noise. Almost sounds like you're stressing noise. And this is our sentence. Sorry about the background noise. 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 Noise. Because what's happening is you're raising the pitch on noise. You do raise it on background, but then you raise it on noise even a little higher. So it almost is giving the effect of noise sounding like your stress part when again in reality you want to be stressing a uh, um, background sorry about the background noise yeah hey, sorry about the background noise um if you want to have a rising intonation because this is a situation again rising intonation is common at the end of sentences to make things sound a little friendlier um, or even like a little bit more polite 
or things like that, or just seeking some empathy. So it, it is a relatively common tactic to use rising intonation at the end of a sentence, even though it's a sentence, not a question. Um, but if you do that, just make sure that your pitch stays lower than your stressed word. So you want to raise the pitch on background. You want to lower the pitch on noise. Sorry about the background noise. Sorry about the background noise. So notice that background noise, background noise. Sorry about the background noise, background noise. So you notice kind of just a difference in pattern there. Compare this to the original. The background noise. Background noise, background noise. Um, besides that with pitches. Sorry about the background noise. I think your the actual sounds and things are okay. Sorry about the background noise. Sorry about the background noise. Uh, maybe I'm back. Watch out for your ass sound. About the background. Yeah, back, back. A little tense there. Back. Sorry about the back. Sorry about the back. Can you get it a little lower in the throat? A little bit more open. Back, ah, background. Sorry about the background noise. Okay. Um, I thought something sounded a little tense. I think it's that ass sounding back. All right, but Zobeda, thank you so much for sending that. File, hope that's helpful. <laughs> Sorry that you always need to say that sentence. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, we have a question. Oh. Oh, man. Nameless and faceless. They're trying to kill me, man. Da, 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 da. Wish to wish you wish to wish. Okay. This is a hard one. <laughs> Do this one with me, guys. Let me know how you feel it goes. Okay. Let me just read it really quick. Get an idea of what I'm saying. Wish the wish, 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 wish. Okay, well let's let's see how this goes. Probably not very well. Uh, I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but if you wish to wish the witch wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish wish. Is that okay? <laughs> Let me know how that <laughs> sounds. I think I did okay, all things considered. It could have been way worse. I'll, I'll take that. I'll give myself like a solid like a B plus. Who's this? Like riding a bicycle. <laughs> Very smooth and casual, like riding a bicycle. Okay, close the blinds. Okay, this one's new, I think. Alexa, close the blinds. Can Alexa do that? Alexa in the U.S. is not able to do that, I don't think. Is anyone in the U.S. Anyone here in the U.S. have Alexa? And she's closing blinds. Is is Alexa more advanced in other places around? Is she like closing blinds and like grocery shopping and like driving your car and things like that? Is she is she doing that? Um, but again, our sentence. I am super curious and also mildly terrified. Alexa, close the blinds. Okay. Alexa, I like your um, schwa sound at the end of Alexa. I really like that. Alexa, close. Alexa, you got uh, uh, very natural. I need to distinguish between good job and <laughs> natural sound. I think that's a very natural sounding schwa sound. Alexa, Ale Alexa, 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 Alexa. You could probably even get like a touch more air on the S sound after the L, but that's very, I'm being very nitpicky. Alexa, close the blinds. So like after Alexa, it, it does sound to me like your sentence kind of closes up a little bit. Not as much air through comes through. It's like you're, can you say O oh for me? Oh, oh. After you say O, oh, can you say low? O, oh, low, O, oh, low. Those vowels should sound the same. If you find that O oh is okay, but low sounds different that could be a sign that your l sound is causing your your placement to kind of tense up and block air so you definitely want to be careful of that if that's happening i don't know if that is or not you can let me know in the chat box or in the comments afterwards alexa close the close close versus close close alexa close alexa close blinds blinds versus blinds blinds alexa close the blinds blinds sounds a little high right blind Blind versus blinds, blinds. Again, I think our lower jaw could open a little bit more, and I think more air could come through our throat. So it's not bly, it's more bly. Okay. And again, another progression that could be helpful to kind of check yourself. Okay. Just say I. Make sure you're getting lots of air through. I. Okay. Now add an L sound before that. Can you do I lie? I lie. Do those vowels sound the same? 
or is it sounding different after you add that L? Check yourself. I lie. If those sound okay, let's try adding an N sound after it. Can you do I lie line? I lie line. Again, all those vowels, as always, should sound the same. Ask yourself, are they sounding the same though? Or are they sounding a little bit different? Okay, so kind of just check yourself. And then you can say the full word, blinds. I lie line blinds. Okay. You want to be careful with the letter L. You want to be careful with the letter N because these are vowels that tend to close off your vowel sounds if you're not careful. And you don't want that to happen. Okay. Um, so just anything else that we want to mention for this file? Alexa, close the blinds. Yeah. So again, very clear. I think all the words are clear. I just think the second half of your sentence just sounds a little bit closed off. Um, not as much air making it through. Hopefully that helps. Um, I'm going to give you guys back your screen just a moment. Um, how do you say the word apply? I say apply. <laughs> uh, schwa sound. Uh, and then apply. Make sure, again, just like we talked about that I sound. It's like uh, I. So from a schwa sound to an I sound. Um, uh, I, uh, I, and then you can add the rest. It's like, uh, I, uh, ply, uh, I, uh, ply. They should sound the same. Okay, so I'll practice going from one to the other. Okay. Uh, Dustin, was that that file that I just listened to? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I would say, yeah, for that second half, for that second, was it this one? No, that's a manual. Check that moment. I already closed it. Yeah, so that second half, like the close the blinds, I would say try to keep it a little lower and more open. I think the bigger thing is even going to be uh, uh, airflow, just not block the air. Do some of those exercises that I just mentioned. I think that's going to be the key thing. Okay. Um, real quick, guys, if you're finding this helpful, you know, we do practice like this every single day in our pronunciation group, um, which I just want to show you really quick. Eel, please. Um, I think your O sounds are a little bit tense. I'm getting a lot of O. Take off the T on center. Okay, so if you again go to patreon.com slash American or become a channel member on YouTube, you can join our pronunciation telegram group where every day we do kind of like what we do today. We have some different sentences that you can practice saying, some individual words, vowel sounds, consonant sounds, linking, all kinds of stuff, intonation, and you send audio files. We listen to it. It's me and another instructor I've worked with for years named Lenora. She's great. Um, we listen to you, and then we give some suggestions and feedback. So if you are enjoying this, I really strongly encourage you to check out our pronunciation telegram group. Go to patreon.com slash fluent American, and you get daily pronunciation practice. Or again, you can become a channel member. Just look below this live stream. You see the join option. Um, and we want to help you out every single day of the week if you're looking for that sort of practice. Let me see. Oh, another question too. The L and blinds is light L or dark L. I think you have some flexibility. You can certainly do it with a light L, like blah, blah. So when I'm doing that, blah, blinds, I'm making contact with the tip of my tongue and the top of my mouth. Blah, blah. I'm not sure if you can see it. Blah, blinds. I'm, that's a slightly exaggerated form, but I want you to see my tongue. Okay blinds um but you could also say blinds with the tip of your tongue down against the bottom of your mouth blinds blinds like close the blinds okay and again especially in your rapid speech and things like that you can actually have your tongue low because i do think you have some flexibility oh this is great they mentioned that shok says they like poetry yes yes we all poetry always has a home with me in fact i don't know if you guys can see it but the books behind me say poetry can see those poetry 100 years poetry 100 years close that's a magazine they just they had their 100 year anniversary what a couple years ago five ten years ago or something dum, 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 dum. question, question. And... Okay. I imagine it's it's this kind of a tricky one because some of these aren't actual words. So I don't know if there's supposed to be like a schwa sound or an oo sound. I'm guessing just based on the sounds, I think it's supposed to be oo. Um, Norma would have said like summa luma, but I'm guessing it's summa luma. Okay. 
but well let's, let's try this out see how this goes you guys keep pushing me um Summa luma, duma luma, you assuming I'm a human. What I got to do to get through to you? I'm superhuman, innovative, and I'm made of rubber, so anything you say is ricocheting off of me. Is that okay? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Is it a rap song? Maybe. Maybe some of that spoken word. <laughs> I haven't listened to Eminem in a very long time. I do have the Marshall Mathers LP somewhere. That was from a long time ago. All right. Let's uh, take a look. I see I have two original files, and then we have some other people that have sent some things I want to take a look at. So let us share once more. And by the way, if you're just joining us, let me show you. Maybe you want to send in some pronunciation files, or maybe you're scared right now to send in files, and that makes you nervous. But maybe next week you won't be nervous. Well, again, this Google document that we use is the same one that we use every single live stream. So every edition of the Schwab Mill on Saturdays. And you can find it, again, in the video description. You can also find it at the top of the chat box. And because it's the same link that we use every time, you can save it, favorite it. And then typically on Thursdays and Fridays, I clear it out. So that way you can add in your own files with some new sounds. Okay, so it would be great to hear from you. Um, if this is your first time finding the stream, welcome. Say hello in the chat. Say like, hey, it's my first time. Um, let us know. Or if you're watching on the replay, also let us know too. Great to see. Okay, last two original files. I think these are both people second files. Like riding a bicycle. Like riding a bicycle. A lot of confidence and swagger. Like, so this is our sentence. Like riding a bicycle. Yeah, I, I don't think I have anything super major to say. I think it sounds pretty good. Like riding a. Like riding. Like riding a bike. Like riding a. Like your drop downs. So like riding a. Riding a. Like riding a. Riding a bicycle. By. Can you say I buy for me? And just make sure your vowels are staying the same. I buy, I buy, I buy. Just kind of doing that repetition. I buy, I buy, I buy. Is your vowel staying the same after B? Because I'm kind of getting the feeling, Emmanuel, that after, I, I think your B sounds are slightly tensing your vowel sounds um, that come after it. Okay, so just make sure that your Bs aren't having such a big impact. We saw this earlier with Bush. Um, buy, bicycle. Bicycle. Riding a bicycle. Um, also, that dark L at the end could have just a little bit more air. So, ca, ca, like riding a bicycle. Like riding a bicycle. Riding a bicycle. Do that cool, cool. Versus ca, ca. Just feel like I'm able to get a little bit more air through it than what I'm hearing from your file. Riding a bicycle. But cool. Versus ca. See if you can hear that difference. But these are, again, very minor things. Um, I, I think overall, you should be pretty um, happy with this file. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sending that. It's a, it's a short sentence. <laughs> if there's other questions you have about it, let me know. But um, those would be my main things. They could sound pretty good. Okay. Last of our original files. Take a quick peek. You can say that again. You you can say. You can say that. Uh, Marcos again pitches. We're staying super flat, man. You can say that. You that you can say. You can say. You can say. There's no movement in pitch. It's just da, 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 da. It's just over, 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 over. Um, variety. Give me, give me some range. I know you have some dynamic range. I, I've told you before, you could be an actor with some of the stuff you do. Um, but I don't think you're giving me the whole range here. You can say that. You can say. Listen, this is, again, another phrase, the super common expression. Um, I would put it into Youglish. Like, you can say. You can say. I would type that into Youglish and just listen. It's like 10 or 20 different people saying that phrase. And I think you're just going to hear so much more um, dynamic expressions with this. You can say, you can say. That again. You can say that again. I would probably, so that is like that again, that again. So again, it's almost the opposite problem. So it's like you, you've raised the pitch on that. And again, you've raised it, which is good because those are your stress parts. You can say that again. Um, but you're giving kind of equal pitches to, to both of them once more. That again. 
Gonna say that again. That again. So it almost sounds like you're stressing again. Um, most likely, again, going to you guys and listen to people say it, most likely the stress you're going to hear is going to be that. It's not actually going to be again. It's not that again. It's more that again. You can say that again. You can say that again. You can say that again. Yeah, so in terms of, I was saying in terms of pitches, that's the thing I want you to focus on. Um, the way I would do that, you can say, you can say, no, it's down, down, down. You can say, you can say that again. You can say that again. You can say that again. Um, you can say that again. Or another thing, you could have that slight rising intonation at the end. Okay, you can say that again. You can say that again. Okay, but just kind of have more separation with your pitches because right now everything sounds bunched together. It feels like you're giving me like two pitches when I want like four at least. And that's definitely going to be my biggest piece of advice there. Um, hope that's helpful. If anything's not clear, be sure to let me know. Okay. But yeah, let's, I know you have some ranges with your pitches. So show me. Show me, show me, show me. The new rap guy. Oh, God. <laughs> I definitely do not rap. I enjoy rap. More of a blues person, but um, not my thing. He said, I don't even know how to say it. This is not even English. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I wouldn't know where to start. Is it a schwa? <laughs> like Lund? <laughs> I would have no idea where to go with that. All right, I have to take a moment to listen to some new files. In the meantime, just a gentle reminder. Like what you're hearing? Let us know by liking and subscribing. Okay, Mimo, I got yours. Next, we got Bernie's. Bernie does not sound like that. Oh my gosh. He is like 89 years old. <laughs> and just kind of just, just dies. Okay. Well, that one works. <laughs> Take a listen to the next one. I'm scouting, scouting, scouting. We'll check these in a moment, guys. Just give me a moment to scout. Okay, Max, yours is super fast, man. We're going to talk about kind of lengthening your vowel sounds. Okay, because it's going a little bit too much. Kung Fu fingers. Oh, well. All right, you guys will be in for a treat, I think. In the last audio file. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> All right, well, I guess these are ones I can do. <laughs> you guys, I think, are in for a, a treat. I don't know. You can let me know how you feel about these in a moment. Let me share everything. Okay. Is it Chad or Chode or Chod? I don't know. Rakesh, I'm looking at what you sent. Okay. Kind of work backwards. Get your act together. Get your act together. This almost has a, this has the sense of almost like a voice to text thing. So I want to make this sound less robotic. The reason why I'm saying that, it sounds like a little bit robotic. Get your act. Get your get, get your act. 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 I think the issue is the pitches are just so similar. Is it? Did 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 did. Get your act. Did did did. Get your act. Um, we want more variation. Kind of just what I mentioned for Marcos. Like, get your act. Go down on your. Get your act. Get your act. Get your act. Just. Lowering that pitch on yours is going to make this sound so much more dynamic and so much less robotic. Okay, so mix up your pitches a little bit more. Okay. Get your act. Get your act. Get your act. 
The other thing too is that with the your your typically gets reduced to your your, but you're saying your your so your your pitch and placement are really high. It's like get your get your get your act get your act versus get your act more your your seeing so lower that a little bit more open more air get your get your act cause reduce it more get your act together get your act together. Get your act together. Also notice on together, your your first syllable, you're making into a fast D sound. Act together. Get your act together. Get your act together. Get your act together. A lot of times with together, I don't want to say always, but a lot of times that T, that first T is going to stay a T. Because it's an act together or act together. I would do more T. -t. This is the case where I personally would probably use more of a light L. I mean, a, 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 a standard aspirated T. Get your act together. Get your act together. So that would be my big recommendation there. But the biggest thing is going to be the pitches. Get your act together. Er, er. Again, also placement on that final R sounds a little higher. It's like er, er, er versus er, er, er. Get your act together. It's not together. It's together. Because just trying to lower your placement on that. Okay, so pitches and placement. Those are going to be the big things that um, I, would, I would say about that file. Okay, it's a quick sentence. If anything there isn't clear, let me know. Um, but I think those have the biggest impact on your speech. Um, our next one, I'm going to skip because this one's a little shorter. I'm under the weather, but wind isn't blowing. Okay, constant sounds really, really, really strong. This is our sentence here. Under the weather, but the wind isn't blowing. Okay. Here's the sentence we are taking a look at here. So you guys can see that. I'm under the weather, but wind isn't blowing. I'm under the weather, but I'm under the weather. Your, your constant sounds are so dominant. I'm under the weather, but I'm under the weather. It's a I'm under the weather, but versus uh, uh, your difference between da, 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 uh, uh. we in general you kind of want more of the second. You want more of the vowel sounds to stand out, less of the consonant sounds to stand out. Um, some more concrete examples. I'm under the weather. I'm under. I'm under. Can you say I'm under? I'm under. I'm under the weather. Can you weaken your M sound? I'm under the weather. I'm under. You're doing like I'm under. Versus I'm under. I'm under. Notice that for me, wash my lips. I'm under. I'm under. I'm under. I'm under. I'm under. You know, you can do an M sound. Let me make myself a little bigger. Okay. It's like I'm under. I'm under. I'm under. You know, you can even have it without any contact, or you could have some light contact. I'm under. I'm under. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured he was doing. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but again, I'm under. I'm under. Okay. So um, watch out for that. Okay, with that M sound, trying to lighten that. I'm under the weather. I'm under. I'm under the weather. Under. Or under. Under. Can you say under for me? Under, under, under. Can you say it three times? Under, under, under. So notice the, the sounds that you want to stand out are the uh sound and the er. Er, er, er. Under, under, under. Er, er, under. Under, under, under. Okay. So under, under, under. If you find that that D sound is kind of taking over the R sound, that's not your consonants maybe a little too strong. I'm under the weather, but the weather. Can you say the weather? The weather. The weather. Can you say the weather with the tip of your tongue against the bottom of your mouth? The weather. The weather. The weather, because right now I'm hearing the weather, the weather. Under the weather, but. Weather, but. The weather, but. Versus the weather, but. Because just again, trying to find some ways to open up these vowel sounds a little bit more. I'm under the weather, but wind isn't blowing. The wind isn't blowing. I'm under the weather, but wind isn't blowing. Now for the second half, I like this. Second half, I think sounds really open. The wind isn't blowing. It's like the i, i, o, a. Lots of short eye sounds. But wind isn't blowing. When is it blowing? And I like your short eye sounds. I think those sound really clear. Um, so I'd really be focusing on that first half, trying to open up your vowel sounds more, trying to weaken your consonant sounds more. I'm under the weather, but I'm under the weather. I'm under the weather. I'm under the weather, but. The other issue with that first part, too, is that you're stressed. Everything's like kind of equal length in your syllables. Da, 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 da. Whereas I'm under the weather. You know, if you hold, weather's your stress. So that first syllable you want to hold longer. I'm under the weather, but I'm under the weather, but so just by holding that first syllable on weather and raising the pitch a little higher, 
just helps add some clarity to your sentence, helps differentiate it, and that's going to make it a little bit easier for your listener to say. For your stress, so again, for your stressed words, make sure that the stress syllable is longer, um, pitch is a little higher, just to help distinguish it from your the other words in the sentence. I'm under the weather, but wind isn't blowing. Yeah, those are definitely going to be my, my major points there. Focus on that first half of that sentence. I think the second half is pretty good. Um, thanks, for sending that file. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's like from Batman. Uh, people keep challenging me. I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Jeff. Thank you. All right, let's um, take a listen to our next one. Time flies when you're having fun. Here I am, 89 years old. I wish I was still a teenager. But... And then she stops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That was, if you're familiar with American politics, that was supposed to be Bernie Bernie Sanders. <laughs> All right, well, we'll take that. Oh, 20 seconds, 15 seconds. Oh, my God. All right, next one. Well, folks, it is now 2024, and I'm happy to be back as president of the United States. Oh, look at all those familiar faces. <laughs> <laughs> Someone clip the laugh and send it to me afterwards. I love the. It just it sounds so fake and forced. <laughs> it's just it's so fake. Ah, but anyways, I have one more. <laughs> See how this one goes. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Otherwise, I will destroy them one by one with my kung fu fingers. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jackie Chan. That was Jackie. All right, guys. Um, if you have some questions and things, now is a great time because I see one file. <laughs> Call me Josh again. <laughs> Again, Josh is over at uh, English Hacks, or I think he changed his channel name. I forget what he changed it to. Um, let's take a listen, though. I just want to scout this file. Oh, we've got some bass coming. <laughs> that's great i think you guys will like this uh did he sound natural um yeah for the most part it wasn't bad sometimes the placement's getting a little bit high a little bit closed off so again just trying to as always you know i always tell my pronunciation students look in pronunciation classes i'm going to tell you two pieces of feedback every single class and they, there's no secret a little lower and more open in your throat more air this is pretty much the two pieces of advice that i say over and over again for american english pronunciation but it's 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 really true you know if you're able to do that it changes the whole sound you know so that's very consistent feedback but in general yeah it's hard with imitations and things like that because things are so exaggerated but um no not horrible I'm the singer? No. <laughs> I definitely am not the singer. <laughs> I definitely am not. Um, one, I don't have time to be putting in these files. You guys see my screen and stuff. Like, you guys see everything I see. So I have no time to, like, input these files. Um, I, I am not. That is not me. He has appeared in some videos of ours, though. This is one we just listened to, right? Oh. 
Dude, I, like for instance, uh, going back to Dustin, does he sound natural? Like, listen here. Um, pull all your eggs. Eggs versus eggs. You know, it's like just to give a quick example. It's not a eggs. It's more eggs, which is again just lower and more open. You know, this is a relatively common thing for vowels. Well, all sounds, but just in the case of that example for the for the vowel. All right, I think this may be our last file. Raindrops keep falling on my hair. And just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed. Unfortunately, I do have a class to run to. I'm so sorry, but. <laughs> well, actually, I do have a class to run to in a couple of minutes. Not going to lie. <laughs> but that's great. I appreciated that ending. Thank you so much for the singer for continuing to delight us with his wonderful audio file. Truly unexpected. You never know what's going to happen. Okay. There was some singing. It's actually been a minute since the singer sang. Assuming that's the same person. I believe it is, but you never know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for spending part of your Saturday with me. Okay, I know that with when it comes to American English pronunciation, you guys have so, so many different options. So the fact that you chose to spend a little bit of your Saturday with me, uh, it means a lot. You know, that we would not be here on the channel without you guys. Um, a quick note, I have some side projects going on, which means that, at least for a little while, um, it's going to be harder for me to put some videos out. I do intend to continue doing live streams, and I hope to get some you know, for people that don't want to watch, you know, an hour and a half of our live stream, I plan to get out during the week, like some shortened versions, you know, 10, 15, 20 minute versions of our live stream, just kind of condensing things of people who are looking for a short version. Um, but for our regular um, video on demand, it's probably a little while before I get another video out just for the other projects and things. That said, again, I will be around on Saturdays, continuing with the live stream. And we, of course, also have our Telegram group. We have classes, group classes, and things like that to also continue looking at. You can see all of our services at fluentamerican.com. But yeah, I will see you guys next week. We'll same time, 13.30, 1.30 p.m. East Coast time where we check your pronunciation. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Have a good day. Good night. Good afternoon. Thank you for spending some time with me here at the Schwa Mill on Fluent American. I will see you guys in a future live stream or video. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night and a good afternoon. You guys take care, okay?